works. Is everyone back and unmuted? Hello. I'm here. Need to unmute selves. Sorry. Hello. That. Hi. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to this week's learning space. I am Nicole Gallucci, postdoc with the CosmoQuest project, and I have down at the end my lovely co-host George Bracy. <laughs> hello there. We are we are the the formal and informal twin pillars of CosmoQuest education, or something <laughs> like that. So. And we have with us today, uh, we have Dr. Rubidium with her fantastic squid hat. <laughs> Yay! As the, uh, the, the, the coordinator who wrangled all the cats for the do-it-yourself science of Geek Girl Con, which we'll be talking about. And in the Cthulhu hat, we have Dr. Mr. Francis. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to call you that forever. Matthew Francis is... That's okay, uh, noisy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Is a regular on the weekly space hangout and does all the science blogging and also runs Cosmo Academy at Cosmo Quest. And so you helped with the do it yourself science zone as well. So yay and welcome and thank you guys. Uh, so I forgot to turn on the Q and A app beforehand. So sorry about that. Uh, but you can uh, comment, ask questions, say hello, all the usual things on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, we're watching those comments uh, on the page there. And I'm attempting to use Comment Tracker, but it's different now, so it doesn't work as well. Hmm. Um, I'm also watching the event page. If you're watching the event page on Google+, Plus, uh, you can comment and say hello and ask questions there as well. So please feel free to join in and share the link and do all that fun stuff. So yay! Uh, let's okay. So let's start off with the basics. Um, we did this event at Geek Girl Con. So what is Geek Girl Con for those who who don't quite know what that is? So Geek Girl Con is an organization that focuses on the contributions of women to to all kinds of geeky pursuits. So you've got the hard physical sciences, science fiction, fantasy, horror, tech, all that stuff. Um, and of course, once a year, there is actually the con. So there's programming going on all year, and then, uh, which seems to be now it's going to be in October, uh, it's a two-day conference. And so there's all types of programming. Uh, maybe a little bit different from some other sci-fi cons is that there's a whole kind of hard physical sciences, computing, and tech programming track, um, in addition to pop culture, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, cosplay, all, you know, arts and... The fictional and, nerd pursuits. Yes, they're the, all of the, of the geek gumbo, if you yeah. will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we went along to that. It was October 19th and 20th. It's in Seattle. Is it always in Seattle every year? It is always in Seattle, okay. yes. And, and it was my first time at that con, so it was really fun, even though I didn't actually get to go to many of the amazing panels I saw on the program, because <laughs> I was playing with science. So uh, where did you get the idea to do the science zone? So last year, I, I'm, I was on Geek Girl Con staff. It's an all-volunteer staff of about 35, 45 people. Um, and I was on staff working the con last year, and there was always a gaming zone. So this year was just year three of Geek Girl Con. And there, since its first start, there's always been a gaming zone, which is both tabletop games and electronic games. And it was multi-room. And they had this really cool activity where you could, with a box of you know, potpourri of stuff, you could build your own game. And I'm in this room thinking, oh my gosh, we <laughs> need a place where you can do your own science. We need a do-it-yourself science zone, mm. like they have the gaming zone. Yeah. And as soon as I had the idea, I told another staffer, Christine Hassel, who's uh, the Twitter admin uh, for Geek Girl Con, and just started... Um, harassing people, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and and wrangling cats, and yes. getting funding together, and working with uh, the staff to get a space, and start cooking up experiments. Um, you know, you've been to this con now, Nicole and Matthew, and cons like it. You, you have to really think about experiments that are not only interesting and fun, but that aren't fire hazards. <laughs> um, Washington Convention Center does not really have a sense of humor about <laughs> open sparks or flames. Um, Can't blame them. 
And they don't really like it when you like spray fun chemicals everywhere, you know, that are bright colors or maybe glow in the dark. They don't and I don't think that that's fun either. Has this happened in previous cons? I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying that. So that was a, a challenge too, and then to to rope people together. Um, part of the thing was not only to get people to have a place where they could just tinker with short, you know, fairly fast experiments or projects, but I also wanted to bring certain people there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, people who are really passionate about outreach, um, that that's kind of their thing that they, they love to do, so t mm -hmm. scientists. Um, but also, I didn't want all the scientists to look like all the scientists that people think scientists look like, <laughs> namely the dorks on the Big Bang. Um, so I wanted the scientists that I, the ones that look like myself, that look like my friends and colleagues and peers. So I wanted to round up a diverse set of scientists to, to reflect the community that they would be working with. Um, and so that took a little bit of, of wrangling as well. But I think it was worth it to get the diversity of projects and to get the diversity of people. Um, I think really made the zone special. Here's our... Oh, um, oh. Here's our diversity yeah, of people. Sure. This is day one, the, the very lovely group picture we took before we got mobbed with uh, con goers. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, just covered every science, basically, and, and had all kinds of people in costume and younger people, and it was, it was really fun. So did all these people, everybody brought their own project to sort of share, or did you actually have materials there that people could come in and just do their own science? Oh, we supply. Yeah, that was part of the fundraising effort. Is people said, okay, it's, it's like I did slime gack. So part of the fundraising effort was to buy all the supplies. Mm -hmm. Everything was shipped to Seattle, and the staff uh, with Geek Girl Con was great because we held everything in their storage unit before we moved it into the con on Friday. Because we only get 24 hours to set up the entire convention center um, for a two-day con. And so they had just had a huge medical conference, so they're flipping it, and we're moving everything in on Friday. So you guys brought the Great Crater experiment, so you guys kind of brought those supplies with you. But we were one of the few separately. The few, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but every as far as everything else, uh, DNA extraction, GAC, um, we we got a coffee shop to donate for for. Uh, um, coffee ground fossils, magic breath, and hydrogen prints. Everything was ordered and shipped there and unpacked and prepped Friday. Um, that was that was kind of my all day job with Geek Girl Con staffers that yeah. were there to help me with the zone. And then um, Maria Velabara, who is a professor at Seattle Central Community College, helped out as well. As did um, Tori, who works at Shoreline Community College. We had a, a couple great local people that were also helping us kind of do logistics on the ground to buy like last minute supplies. Frozen strawberries, could yeah. ship those. <laughs> so we had and I, We ran out of cocoa powder. You guys got a extra cocoa yes. powder too. <laughs> and that I, was, yeah, we ran out of some supplies on day one. We, we planned, I planned for about 300 people. So we were pretty well covered for most things. Um, but DNA was super popular. The craters were super popular. Um, so those are the two that we had additional supplies for. So everything from, you know, test tubes to paper towels um, was was paid for by our great donors. Um, and that it, most of the money was raised by just people giving five, ten dollars. We had a couple of big donors: um, Chemical and Engineering News, which is a magazine of the American Chemical Society, um, kind of gave us a, a bigger chunk, but the these most guys, by far. These guys helped yes. out in a different way. Geek <laughs> gave us some prizes because we yeah. gave away prizes. Um, we had exploration badges so people could get punches, which also were drawing tickets. Um, and they gave us some great kind of science themed uh, prizes to kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you could get at least do three experiments and you would be entered to win the drawing. Um, so the, those were helpful. But really, the, the main bread and butter for funding everything was small donations of five to ten so there's no amount is too small we had lots of those yeah. and twenty dollar ones that really added up and um, we raised over fifty five hundred dollars because we were able to support travel couple hotel rooms and all of our supplies 
Um, and then the, the con staff itself gave everybody um, two-day pat, pat um, and then of course printing and all the kind of support, you know, advertising costs were waived. So it was really, everything worked out. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, how did you get involved in this <laughs> madness? <laughs> While I show a picture of you showing kids craters. <laughs> there we go. Um, well, I uh, actually Ray uh, approached me. Dr. Rubidium asked me to to join as as one of her hench hench people, <laughs> and uh, I I cannot say no. Um, <laughs> it's uh, um, I used to run a planet direct a planetarium in Tennessee, and so I've I've done a great deal of uh, public outreach of this sort. Um, I was surprised how many kids were actually there. Um, I think that's unusual. But uh, yeah, you can see there in the in that picture that those are those are two of the youngest kids we had. I think that day we had we had a, a wide variety of ages, but there were some kids there that were. Quite young, but also you know, older kids who who really were very very interested in all the science we showed them. Um, so uh, that that sort of thing is is definitely my game, um, and some great costumes too from the the kids and kids and adults alike. Yeah, it was a very friendly con. I don't see that level of of younger participation at, say, something huge like Dragon because they'll probably just get done in the crowds, let's, let's be honest. Um, it's a very, um, it's, it's a huge age range. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very diverse con. Yeah. And it's very family friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so there's programming that's specifically aimed at all age groups um, and, you know, kind of family friendly spaces and they, and they really right. that. Um, and so you saw, I mean, and I think in the zone you just saw kids of all ages, if you will. I mean, you saw the, the four-year-olds all the way to 45-year-olds and 70-year-olds, you know, playing it with stuff. And so that was really fun to see. Um, lots of teens. Lots of teens, which was nice. Um, and so I just, I mean, that's what I really liked about Geek Girl Con is um, it was a busy couple of days, good traffic. You mm -hmm. could tell that the con, you know, they sold out their passes on Thursday, I believe. Oh, wow. Uh, and so being year three, this it was pretty exciting for them to sell out. Um, but it's also a good mix of ages and um, not not everybody that came into the zone is interested. I mean, there, you had such age ranges that they just are interested in science and learning. They maybe they're not a scientist. They don't want to be a scientist. They just wanted to tinker and have some fun. Right. And and that's really what the zone is for. Is just to kind of have a few minutes um, one on one. Because a lot of the times that was another benefit was the ratio of experimenter to scientist. It was a tight group a lot of the time, mm -hmm. so you know, two, three people per person running a project, you really had a lot of interaction, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's important for you know, if, if most people don't know a scientist, uh, then they can see that you're not this kind of robotic stereotype, socially <laughs> awkward. Uh, <laughs> That you're yeah. quite wah, wah then. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did you get more girls uh, than boys given the event, or was it just a mix? Anything you can. I'd say so. You did more. Were there more? Yeah, yeah the picture I picture showing I mean, here has all girls, but I think it was a good mix. Yeah, I would say I would say it wasn't. It was it was more girls than boys, but there were plenty of boys there too. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a good mix, um, age-wise, um, and I thought it was a good mix gender-wise. Um, it is Geek Girl Con. I think, un um, unfortunately, people, you know, kind of sometimes jokingly say, "Oh, can boys and men go?" Of course they can. Uh, <laughs> but I think sometimes maybe that filters that kind of misunderstanding. It's just that it's it's focused on. Um, the contributions of women to science, technology, and, and pop culture. Um, but I think we did have a, a, a. I think one of the first people that I helped on day one was a boy and his father. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and so there was a really good mix. And then the next group that came in were three people. I'd say they were in their late 20s. <laughs> so you would go from helping, you know, an eight-year-old boy with his dad to helping, you know, three 20-somethings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that I liked that part, to see that kind of range coming through um, was really fun to have them working side by side. Strangers, kids, adults, maybe family members uh, doing stuff together. That was a lot of fun to see. And I, I heard a couple of comments about how they were so excited to have role models that their kids could talk to right, you know, right here, and they had you know, questions about science, which was really great, too. I think we saw a couple of them at the science careers panel as well. Uh, some of the some of the older kids, <laughs> not really kids, I guess college age, um, came to to a science career panel as well. And I think that that's important to see that, especially you know that they look like you, mm -hmm. that they talk like you, yeah. um, and that they have maybe a similar life experience to you, um, and that they're still get to have fun and play, mm -hmm. and you know this the 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 breaking down of whatever the stereotypes are people think about scientists that this is just you know regular set of people um, well kind of regular. <laughs> kind of yeah last time I said that <laughs> last time I said that I was wearing an ET costume <laughs> as, as silly as the hats so. yeah the, ha the hats kind of the lot it's, of that idea. it's normal for the con environment. Yes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And they got to ask all kinds of questions. You know, it's kind of fun to have a, a parent go, so how much schooling did you have to go to? Yeah, how you much math did you give, take? They give the side eye to their kids, you know, going, yeah. listen to this answer, you know. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun because you really, I think that's the, the, the thing about having, because we, I think it, we had about 15 people that signed up to help at various times, mm -hmm. and we had about 10 projects. So that gave us some opportunity to rotate people in and out, but it also gave um, people that were coming into the zone a low ratio so they could really interact, especially I think that's really key for, for kids and teens um, that just want to, you know, find out. And, and if, you look at the, if you look at your again, you'll see that most of the zone workers were female. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to show the day two costume picture because Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had three African American PhDs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of us in different fields. Um, of, of course, we had you know our, our white male, we had Latino, we had Asian, uh, we had different physical abilities, mm -hmm. um, we had different, uh, dis I think we covered literally every, every scientific discipline. discipline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's really fun for for adults and kids to see yeah. that you know that there's such a range in people doing this work, yeah. um, and I think it was funny because they were like, "You guys are just doing this because." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why oh. not? <laughs> yeah. What kind of kid questions did you get? Anything oh, like kind of about typical or just? Everything. Oh, all, all kinds. I think I did yeah. uh, mostly slime and GAC, and so we had all kinds of questions about, you know, polymers. They, they learned about monomers versus a polymer. Um, you know, why things are certain colors, even something as simple as dilute. You know, they got to make their own colored slime and GAC, but they noticed that when I mixed it this color in with this color, that it looked different. <laughs> and so it was the range of questions, and not just kids. I mean, adults, yeah. because they they're maybe not scientists, or they they're just interested. Um, so I mean, we had all kinds of questions, and then they had questions about what what you do for fun. But mm -hmm. I think they thought we were at work. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do for fun, guys. I'm like this is what we do for fun. Is I'm at for you. Um, so it was really all kinds of questions. What did you guys have That's over awesome. there at Craters? You guys were doing cool space yeah, stuff. Space is always fun. Yes. And I'd say we had a lot of questions too, like, you know, all the the questions about uh, I mean, one thing one thing that we had that was a lot of fun is is uh, actual chunks of of 
meteorite. Space rock? Mm-hmm. That I keep and, in my uh, purse? Yes, <laughs> space rock. And and the thing is, you, when, when you show that kind of thing, <laughs> people do ask... There we go. It is, in my, actual, it is actually in my purse all the time. It's a Chelly Banks meteorite. Thank I, you, Richard Drum. <laughs> But that, but the thing is, when you when you have that, you know, the, that that sparks a lot of questions. Like, you know, what is what is this actually made of? What what's yeah. all the? Because you can see that the the chunk of the the uh, Chelyabinsk meteor meteorite is is you know, not one piece, one material. There's there's bits of of different minerals in it, and so. Uh, um, so you have to ask the question: You what? Why does it look the way it? You can talk about fun stuff like th- these are the you know th- this is a piece of rock that is five billion years old. Well, mm-hmm. give or take, you know, it's as old as the solar system, but it's older than any rock on Earth because back when when that uh, when that uh, meteoroid formed. Um, all the rock on Earth was melted. It was molten. So you can talk about that, and you know, I think a few people kind of got the sense of awe that comes from holding a piece of rock that old. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't really think about ages necessarily when you're thinking about meteorites. At least I don't. Uh, but maybe we should because that's a pretty wild thing. Yeah. Yeah, but we had a lot of questions though, and 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 I think the kids liked a lot of the kids just liked, you know, figuring out what kinds of craters they could mm-hmm. make, and, and then accidentally discovering some of the ma- the marbles that we used as our as our fake meteors were magnetic. That was really yes. fun. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. I did that semi on purpose. <laughs> Well, magnets are always fun anyway. Yes, yes. And then the iron meteorite, which um, still has cocoa powder Uh-oh. and flour in its crevices because some kids thought, oh, I can throw that. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, tried to stop them as much as possible, but yeah. Once, once one person no. said it, it was done. I mean, it was just done. So, yeah, yeah I need to clean it. So, I'm sorry, Fraser. This is the one you gave me. Take a toothbrush to it. <laughs> yes, there we go. Take a toothbrush to it. Yes, yeah, so we got questions about space rocks. We got, um, since we were showing the Cosmo Quest Citizen Science stuff, we were, you know, get, got to give them, you know, little cards with the website on it to take home and try with their parents. So, that was, that was really good. And we got some questions like, how do you become an astronomer? Like, what do you do all day? You know, kind of things like that. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah, part of it is you had a lot of questions. I mean, there were a couple different chemists, but we all did different things, right? There were a couple different right. physicists, but you all, you know, I mean, Steven is a physicist, but now he's working um, kind of in a different area, more on the, maybe the en- engineering side. Um, and then so there were, that was the great thing about having those types of questions, but then when you had something like DNA extraction, Molly was running DNA extraction from strawberries, and then Steven was running the the taste test, the genetic taste test, um, some really great questions, you know, basic science questions, even kind of pretty advanced stuff about you know, genes and hereditary um, things, and so I think it, that was, there was some really fun in there, and then of course just, you know, every anything you have that you could actually see something and be like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> DNA. Yeah. That was really, I mean, that's the fun thing is to see that look on everyone's face. That wasn't just a look on, you know, a seven year old. That was a look on their, you know, 40 year old parents' face. And, mm-hmm. you know, so it was, I think that was to me the, the best part. And of course, my favorite moment was when a kid, um, I got sent an email from a parent, um, who had, who's good friends with another staff member, and she's like, okay, let's go eat. And the kid said, I don't want food. I want all the science. <laughs> I was like, that's right. <laughs> that's how we roll. That's all how the we science. roll. No yeah, time good... for food. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good picture of, uh, I think it's showing, of, uh, of a couple of participants. It looks like a, a, a child, an adult, watching their fingerprints being made. By Chem Jobber, I think, right? That's Chem Jobber, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think we had a good variety. I hope to be back next year mm-hmm. uh, and, and to maybe even expand it a bit. Mm-hmm. So what are your what what are, what are your plans? What are your grand plans? Oh, first let's talk about the fundraising, since like you said, it was oh, mostly yeah. community supported. 
and and how did that go? <laughs> um, I you know I was really worried at first, but I think you know we were able to um, cover um, a significant part of most people's travels. I mean, it's still people still had to pay their own you know kind of per diem every day, and but we were able to assist. And people that needed travel support, about $400 for airfare. That oh, was wow. kind of on average. So that yeah. was really nice. Um, and then I got a hotel room, um, two rooms. Uh, so we crammed, you know, our um, everybody in two rooms near the hotel. So we had to worry about transport. Um, and so we were able to raise, uh, of course, the first thing we purchased, um, especially once we were given free passes as contributors to the con, which saved us, oh gosh, I'd say four or five hundred dollars because yeah. we had so many passes we needed. Um, then we were able to buy supplies, so we probably ended up spending about between the stuff we had ordered and the stuff we had to buy there, I'd say about fifteen hundred dollars in supplies. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most significant part of our um, budget, which is any kind of this type of activity, is going to be accommodations and travel. Mm -hmm. Um, but no one actually got paid for it. We were you know, no, going on our no. own money. <laughs> Everybody, um, <laughs> yeah, everyone showed up Friday. They worked, you know, from eight o'clock in the morning until probably seven o'clock at night yep. <laughs> um, with no, with really no breaks. Yeah. And so, um, and then Sunday uh, we did it all over again and help everyone helped break down and pack up supplies. And then we donated um, extra supplies. Uh, chemical consumables and those types of things went to um, Science Olympiad that is hosted at Seattle oh, Central Community oh, College. Awesome. Um, so they took a lot of stuff off of our hands and we donated that to them as we said That's we were. That's really there. cool. Um, so the fundraising efforts, it was all, again, the you know, the most of the donations were small um, and every bit helped and we were able to bring in, we only started fundraising um, in August, and so that was amazing to me that we were able to get you know that kind of support to be able to bring. And I think the the I really want to thank the people that came and participated because the people that were working there are a lot of great scientists, um, but it takes something to be able to donate that much energy. <laughs> people were on from the minute they got there. And they were participating with people. You really on stage. You know, anyone who's ever taught knows what that's like. Um, but you were on stage for 12 hours. <laughs> and so Lolly was yeah. probably our resident expert. But she is a high school biology teacher. I so know. this is like yeah. routine for her, right? <laughs> like whatever. That's why she looked so cool through the whole thing. I was just like, yeah, the whole thing. She was like, like, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, the rest of us who taught maybe university like an hour, yeah, or two a day, we're like, oh my. but you, re I mean, to really kind of not just be there, but be there, a hundred and fifty percent enthusiasm um, all day, and to really, you know, share the natural passion you have for science and and you know discovery with people. Um, and so I think that this was, and they, everybody worked so great together, and we're able mm -hmm. to cover different areas and. So I think it was just it was a group um, to bring to the con. So then, what do, what do you have planned for the future? What are you not maybe planned, but scheming to do for the future? <laughs> scheming. Well, I'd love to. I mean, right now, I'd love to go back to Geek Girl Con um, 2014. I just think that 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 particular con and that staff they're very supportive of mm -hmm. of the hard science track and and programming wise and space wise, and they really helped out in a way that I don't think a lot of cons would as far mm -hmm. as accommodations with shipments and picking stuff up and Melanie the director of operations inventoried all of our supplies for us to make sure we were getting anything that we ordered I mean all of that kind of extra stuff and working with design to come up with the flyers so I'm really hoping to, to be back 11th and 12th of next year but I'd really like to see this I mean that's on the west coast I'd love to to have a DIY science zone, a place where people can tinker at a at a con like this on the East Coast, or maybe somewhere in the the middle part of the country. Um, I think it's not just an idea of you know trying to entice people into the sciences, um, but 
Um, sometimes, you know, it gets so we need more and more scientists. I think it's, I, I just want people to maybe science literacy in the basic way, the exploration, the discovery, the fun of science, knowing that you can find answers to, you know, why does this do this? Why do raisins sink and then float in carbonated soda? What's that all about? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so I would love to see this, you know, the DIY science zone be able to go. I mean, of course, it would be insane if it was like at New York Comic Con or something. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But I think it would be a lot of fun to see if um, you could do something at a con like that or at like Dragon Con or even back in Seattle, Emerald City, City Comic, um, mm -hmm. to, to get people to have... If we get people to build their own game, we can get them to do the science experiment, and I think we've proved that. And I think we're, we're I mean, I'm currently involved in um, convergence planning for Minneapolis, so Melanie is uh, on programming committees for that. So we're trying to entice you to do do it yourself science on there too. Yes. And I think it's, it, I mean, it, it is going to come down to fundraising, of course, to be able to get yes. everyone there. Um, yeah. but that's another con that seems very family friendly to me and uh, already has these hands on space set up and covered in plastic. <laughs> Yay, so yes, tarps can, are key. We can that take over. Messy. Yes. <laughs> Science so, is yeah, messy. I, I think we are planning, I'm planning on being there and, mm -hmm. and doing Invisible Ink, which is another oh, fun yeah. one uh, that's low tech, that, that is a lot of fun and a good historical perspective. Nice. Um, as well as being some fun chemistry. So um, I, I think it's just like with the gaming and, and tabletop games have really seen an insurgence is being able to be tactile, you know, and, and get your hands in there. Mm -hmm. And there's something about, like, your create experiment. There's, there's computer modeling and there's pictures and that's great. But there's something about being able to drop the marble into yep. the coconut and make <laughs> a giant. I was cov my Star Trek uniform was covered in flour. It was oh, no. it was amazing. Yeah, and, and yeah, everything was covered in flour and cocoa. <laughs> I'm still I'm still getting it out of my laptop. Matthew, maybe you can talk more about the tactile experience some of the kids had. Literally. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh that was that was the the a lot of the youngest kids uh, were just you, they got their hands right in and were like kneading around and it's like, oh, they're going to get everybody sick. Whatever they've got yeah. on their hands is going to be transmitted to everybody else. Yep. So, the but, and uh, the best part is, um, whatchamacallit, I just lost my train of thought. Uh -oh. Whoa, sorry, I saw a comment and lost my train of thought. There was <laughs> I don't know. It's okay, Nicole. Uh, oh, no, I remember. Best part was the parents apologizing to us for their kids making a mess. They're like, we're the ones providing the messy materials. Yeah. We should be apologizing to you. So, well, that was a stroke of genius on Melody's part to put the zone where it was. The bathrooms were as close as they could yes. possibly be. Yes. Uh, a lot of them had to leave our station, go to the bathroom, and then come back to keep doing other experiments. Yeah. Same thing with the slime. Yeah. So oh that God. was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I, I yeah just the coffee ground fossils were another one that uh, ended up people ended up. Uh, Needing to wash their hands after that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, at least that one was. That's almost exfoliating. Self-contained. Self-contained. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It, it's not, not, coffee scented Play-Doh. That's, one I, Play -Doh. that's yeah. one I don't know. Can you? Did any of you guys? Do you know that one? Can you describe what that is? I don't remember all what she mixed. It was. Uh, coffee it was basically grounds. play doh with coffee in it. That sounds so interesting. She made her own play doh using coffee grounds. Yeah, and then with coffee grounds, I think flour and a bit of salt. I think she did use flour. A scotch of water uh, oh, yeah. just Here's... to get the right kind of tackiness. Yeah. It, it really held together really well, but you, she was able to reuse wow. it a lot too, like you guys were doing. Hmm. Yeah, and they, they had these little dinosaur things. This little guy was great. <laughs> I, I, oh, I yes. Oh, my God, he was great. But uh, yeah, the little dinosaur prints, they could make little fossils and bring home fossils yeah. and handprints. Oh, very and stuff. cool. Very yeah, cool. that was Emily. Yeah, so it was, it was not about excavation, it was about imprints. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, yes, the, the fabulous Emily Fink. Woo. Yes, in her top hat. <laughs> in her top hat, in her steampunk costume. <laughs> was like, I just threw this together. I'm like, you're thrown together costume. I know. Than anything I actually spent time on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I put mine together. I put mine together from thrift shop buys F and a cloak. But you know that everything. 
where it was from a thrift shop. Um, she actually threw it together. She means like she threw the fabric on a sewing machine and then she threw yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. That's what she means. <laughs> That's what she means. Sorry, we're screening over how awesome Emily is. Here's the raisins one. I think this is the ra- Yeah, this is Dancing Raisins. Um, so I, I just yeah. love that. He's like, about to pour it in. The kids are like bursting with excitement. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, very cool. Let's see. What what have we talked about all the we haven't talked about all the experiments yet. No. So we've got Let's see. We talked about fingerprints. Raisins. So you had build your own raisins. neurons. I curious did build your own neurons. Yeah, let's talk yeah. How many good pictures of that? That was right behind Khalif. There There's go. there she is. That was her first customer of the morning. Oh, my God. Uh, that, yes. Oh, that's a yes. very, that little, hike. very yeah. little girl. She showed up, and we all went, oh, my God, you're a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so using pipe cleaners, they had some really intricate neurons. I think someone was wearing them as a hat at the end of the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else do we that's have? Good. You said someone, the frozen strawberries, that was DNA? Yes. DNA extraction yeah. with lolly. Yeah. And then that's is. Danielle with yeah. nature notebooks and leaf rubbing. Yep. Oh, nice. We it was a really cool. It was a really cool way of making notebooks too. Yes. Um, because it wasn't usually. Usually, when I've I've had people had kids make notebooks, you know, you end up with yarn and and stuff like that. But she had a trick where you could make you you could use just cut the paper and slip it into slip it into the cuts, and it would hold together without having to. To, to make anything like binding, so I thought that was I thought that was a really good good trick. Super low tech, no staples, yes. no string. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do not want string. You don't want. Oh, there was Lolly. That's There's Lolly with the, the strawberries. <laughs> and that's a group of adults, year olds. So oh yeah. yeah. Good... Group of adults extracting yeah. DNA. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, coffee filters, too. Yeah. yeah. Coffee filters, strawberries. What else is in this? Just isopropanol from the first aid aisle, um, okay. some salt. We got clear laundry detergent. I mean, this is all low tech. I mean, you can do that yeah. at home. It takes about 15 minutes, maybe. It's very cool. And I think there are plans, preliminary plans, to um, publish the lesson plan somewhere. We've yes. been collecting the write-ups as well yes. to share them so that people can actually do these things at home. Yes. Oh, and a lot of the you know stuff is out there, you know, floating on the web, but we're going to put it all together. Lolly's um, taking a lead post on her blog um, just so that, you know, hey, guys, if you want to do this again. Um, and some, I mean, so the all of these, you can buy the supplies, at you know your grocery store or your Target slash Walmart slash CVS whatever, <laughs> um, and so they're so easy to do and so I mean, especially the a lot of the parents that came through the slime station, I'd already pre mixed in water bottles the colored water that gives they can give color so I was like, this is a good one for a birthday party. It's covered in plastic anyway. Yeah. People can make their own color. You see how fast it is. Everything is in the craft you know aisle of your Walmart or whatever you want to go to and the kids think it's cool because they think that you know oh my gosh this is slimy and gross and I can't believe my parents are letting me touch it and you know it's just Elmer's glue so yeah right, right, right. <laughs> it's fine you can totally so we have a couple comments uh, Michael Jobin who uh, I actually met at Convergence uh, the sandbox is always full at Convergence that is true whenever there's uh, some activity going on it gets pretty full up um, and uh, today it says we need a case or two of handy at the stations. I'd say about 30. Yeah. <laughs> or well, two ain't going to cut it. <laughs> yeah. We were going through paper towel. Yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah. it was a huge pack of paper towels. It yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. Woo. So um, did we want to mention the some of the fundraising things we did uh, before we're still doing? The acts of yes. whimsy because our scientists who don't have much to offer to our donors, we don't have product necessarily. True. We don't have, you know, not, not a lot of us, we're not all artists or anything. Um, so we offered acts of whimsy to yes. uh, people. Maybe, uh, so the one I ran was the, so those of you who subscribe to my YouTube channel, I apologize. <laughs> You've seen the science Mad Libs. Um, very not safe for work language, but we had a blast, and uh, that actually helped kick up our donations a bit. 
Um, and and then what else do we have in the works? Some really exciting acts of whimsy that will be hitting yes, the internet well, soon. Um, we did the jig. I said if we raised the jig, I missed the jig. <laughs> Five thousand. It was yeah, because I think you. Uh, but we danced the jig badly, which is the point. Yeah, uh, yeah it's very deliberately bad. Yes, it's, that it's, way, right? Yeah, you. It's on YouTube. It was uh, Rachel recorded it for us, but okay. it, I think everyone was dancing a jig. They just weren't all dancing the same one. <laughs> so um, that's awesome. Uh, Danielle, myself, and our friend Isis are going to be recording. Danielle's doing the reenactment of Samuel Jackson's death scene from Deep Blue Sea. We are filming that in just a few weeks. And by the way, horror reenactment because it's the only way to do a rent. Uh, <laughs> I believe that. Oh, Stephen is filming the big prize uh, that I'm so excited for is. Sock Mephius. I can't wait. <laughs> yes, we're talking sock puppets, Prometheus. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Yes. And yes. much, much shorter. Uh, <laughs> so, I can't wait. The whole movie in five minutes, yeah. The whole movie in five minutes with sock puppets. I think it's a vast improvement. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I've never seen the movie, but I learned all I need to learn from a panel at Convergence. Yes. <laughs> so um, I listened to five Nickelback albums. Yeah, that's right. You poor thing. <laughs> Which I think was a violation of the Geneva Convention. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm still having legal I, look into I that. I donated. I voted. Donated whatever I did for uh, not Nickelback. That's true. Apparently. But Help you find out who your true friends are when everyone's like, hee 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 hee, knack. And so uh, Matthew took lots of pictures in his hat. Yes, yes in public places. places. <laughs> and got lots, yes. of, got lots of people staring or trying not to look, very pointedly not looking at me. <laughs> uh, we had one big personal donation, our biggest personal donation. Um, got a hand knitted or is getting a hand knitted pair of zombie dolls which are adorable and they are being knitted by Lolly um, and so she is uh, finishing those up and to our, our largest personal donor um, which was an amazing gift by this person's uh, this person to give us this chunk of change um, and so I know Matthew you and Psy Curious are recording your Yes. Doing a sweet song, right? We are doing yes. We are we are going to be uh, playing and singing the uh, the song from Portal. <laughs> I'm doing science and I'm still alive. Nice. Oh yeah, this this is me. This is me at NASA wallops out of the launch of the uh, Laddie space probe to the moon. Hello. Um, so you can see my dedication. I am I am there. I am with my press pass and my Cthulhu hat. At an, an official NASA facility. That's the <laughs> level of dedication I have to. Uh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, yes, but we, we will be we will be recording that a week from yeah a week from Saturday. So awesome. expect expect quasi professionally rendered version of it wow okay Profe the 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 professional part is sai the quasi part is me <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic oh my god yeah so i think we 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 really do need to collect all these onto one yes oh, one page because once they're all done it'll be easy i yeah. think yeah once they're right now done. we're we're still um doing them all but the acts of whimsy um i just love them all because it's like no, they're going to be awful, but that's the beauty of it. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and they were, and doing them actually seemed to kick up donations while we were doing yes. it too. So that was that was really good. It raised awareness of the project. People like to see us suffer. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> you're just saying that because you haven't listened to five Nickelback albums. <laughs> so yeah, I was going to say I think you suffered the most. You suffered the one. most. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Well, but it, next it, it, year, I don't know how to top myself. Oh my God, they're gonna come out with another album, aren't they? Probably. <laughs> Make you listen listen to Justin Bieber or something. Oh. Well, you have a special <laughs> personal. I don't know hatred of Nickelback, which I think is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Let's not call it a hatred. I think it's just a proper fear from my own personal safety. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But and, and again, this is good because I know we're 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 raising money for the convergence events right now, and it's like Yay. okay, we need stuff to auction off. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, ah, I don't make things. I have to like, <laughs> get people to auction on me doing something ridiculous or something. We'll yes. Yeah. It's your husband, or your, I should say, your almost husband to make something. <laughs> this is true. Hey, no, stuff. no, I know he, he has to finish his masters. <laughs> okay, well, after oh, we're nice. and that led to rope him into that. But yes, yes, I do, I do get get the uh, the partner involved in making things. So yeah, I'll yeah. knit something. I'm sure. <laughs> taking taking votes now. What do you want me to knit? What would you pay for right. to bring people to convert? Suggestions. <laughs> Nominations. Nominations. A Death news. Star. If you needed a Death Star, I would totally bid on that. Ooh. I'm I not that Death Star would be awesome. I'm really not that good of a knitter. <laughs> we'll figure it out. It'll it could be the Death Star after destroyed. Nobody would know. <laughs> actually, actually, a Death Star. You could do a Death Star hat. It's just a, a just a plain yeah, hat do. with the the the. Uh, yeah, I could do. The, the death ray cannon on the front of it. <laughs> this I can do. All right, I'm gonna have to find. Yeah. Gonna go back on <laughs> I bet there's patterns. I bet oh, there's yeah. multiple okay, patterns. You something. know there is. There's Somewhere. like what kind of Death Star hat do you want? <laughs> yes. All right. I think it's been decided for me. I'm making a Death Star hat. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh good way. Good way. And, and and it's again, it's it's heartening to see the community support. Um, yeah, for something like this, and I, I I don't know who all donated, but I'm sure it was not necessarily people who were going to be at the con either. It was just no, most of the people. Yeah, that was the fun thing. I mean, I didn't disclose any of the personal donors because didn't have any of the clearances to do so. Sure. But a lot of the donors, there never there were people from overseas. Um, oh, wow. and there were people who actually volu that I knew worked for the con because they were so <laughs> excited about having this much science at the con. <laughs> um, mm. Most people that donated were not going to be able to attend mm. and that they just thought this was, they were just wanting to be supportive of us trying to bring this something of this magnitude mm -hmm. um, yeah. into existence. And so that, that was really, it was really great to get that kind of support. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially in this time of dire... Funding yes. occasionally. <laughs> yes. Educational and or science funding. So thank you again to all our donors. That was <laughs> amazing. So. Woo. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to go over the, uh, since we're close to ending time. Oh, I got a request for Cthulhu Tea Cozy. <laughs> Cthulhu Tea Cozy. Oh, that would be something. awesome. I'll find something. I'll, I'll, I'll knit something. Not a Tom Baker scarf. Did that once. That took <laughs> um, So I'm going to go over our lineup, and then I would like our guests to wrap up at the end with some final mm -hmm. thoughts about the Science Zone. But first, uh, we have Hangouts coming up. Uh, so Friday is the weekly Space Hangout. Uh, I think we'll be back to a normal week this week. Last week we focused all on Comet Ison, but I think we'll be going back to our usual format of doing the news. Uh, that's at noon Pacific on Friday. Sunday night is our virtual star party with Universe Today and CosmoQuest and all of the fun amateur astronomers who share their telescope views with us. And I actually joined for the first time in months uh, last week and had such a good time. Uh, so that'll be at, they've changed the time because of daylight savings, so I know it's 8.30 central, so it must be 6.30 Pacific. Um, you can check um, the Virtual Star Party page on, on Google Plus to, to confirm that time. I'm sure I'll put it in the newsletter tonight if you're subscribed to the Cosmo Quest newsletter. If not, please do. Um, Monday is Astronomy Cast, usually around 2 p.m. Uh, Fraser Kane and, and Dr. Pamela Gay talk about some topic in astronomy and... Uh, talk about how we know what we know, and then we'll be back around to Learning Space next week, and I don't remember what topic we have. Oh, Colin Wilson! I think next week's Learning Space may be shifted oh. to Thursday, because we'll be talking uh, with one of our co-work, local co-workers here, Colin Wilson, who runs the STEM Resource Center, at which uh, my office is part of. Oh. So, yeah. What's he going to talk about? We're going to be talking about uh, how the kind of like just basics about how the resource center works, oh, uh, right. what it's like, uh, how it's a good resource for teachers. So it's it's a local awesome. resource, but also um, ways in which this idea I think can be expanded uh, largely. And we'll do some fun demos because we have stuff for demos before awesome. we pack it all away and move to another building in two weeks. <laughs> so. 
Yay! All right. Good. That'll be next week's learning space on a new date. That'll be Thursday. Um, I, I do shift times around to accommodate guests when when we can. So sorry about that. If you guys are looking forward to a <laughs> to a Wednesday show. Um, so that's our our upcoming lineup of of hangouts with Cosmo Quest. And I would like to end with Matthew and Ray and your final thoughts on the Do It Yourself Science. Cthulhu, want to go first? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I certainly had a wonderful time. Um, as those of you who know me personally know, you you cannot get me to shut up talking about sciencey things. So this is this is something that I, I just love doing. But uh, I I thought it was a great experience. I think it was a based on what I. I gathered there was not a single negative comment that we got. Um, and wow. People were asking us if we were going to be there next year. Yeah. Um, we've already got ideas for, for additional activities for next year. We talked about that, and after, after right after it was over, we were already right. brainstorming <laughs> ideas for next year. So we will be back. We will be bigger. We will be better. We will... Messier. Messier. Although yes, I mean, there, will be, be there will be again. confetti. <laughs> there will be so much glitter. <laughs> there will, oh, glitter bombs! Uh, <laughs> glitter bombs! <laughs> All right, we need to bring a shop vac next year. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> no, I think the DIY Science Zone um, really did met my two goals, which was one to show the diversity of science itself, how many disciplines and subdisciplines there are, and two to show the diversity of scientists. Uh, and I think that we did that, and so I hope that we get an opportunity to do it again and to do to bring it to, to more spaces. Yes. Excellent. I got a comment asking where's my hat. Um, I don't have one, but I did find this very nice stuffed frog in the hallway. Okay, that works for so me. That's my hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the one that was in the candy machine earlier this week. I stole you need it. to. We need to work on your hats. Then. I know. Really I don't have any. I, I don't have any really cool hats. We need to fix that. All right. I want to buy a little pony hat. This you can borrow my Jane oh. hat. <gasps> oh, I have a Jane hat. I, that's okay. one thing I have knitted for myself. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so so much for joining, and it's good talking to you much. guys again. And I miss hanging out with you guys because it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Thank Yay. you. Okay. So thank you for watching, everyone, and we hope to see you next week on Learning Space. Bye. Bye.